Um, we're actually going to be starting off listening from Jorge Baracute uh, Esteves, Elba Nacalugo, uh, La Abuela Sacira Rodriguez, and then uh, also a scholar, Serena Feliciano Santos, who's part of, I would say, part of the new wave of scholars that are taking a serious look at Caribbean indigeneity. Uh, before we start, I wanted to acknowledge a few folks, uh, folks like Max Forte, one of the uh, groundbreaking scholars around this topic. He was actually supposed to be moderating today's session, but was unable to make it. Folks like Lynn Guitar, who's here. Uh, many of the other uh, scholars that were part of critical members of our team in terms of uh, untangling this story of Caribbean indigeneity and uh, telling, uh, finding new ways to sort of illustrate and talk about the Taino movement. Um, but I also want to honor and acknowledge many of the other leaders of the Taino movement who might not be on this stage, but definitely who have had something to say and who have contributed to our research. We're talking about folks like Mucaro Borrero, Warichi Soto, who's here, Ture Dominguez, Miguel Sague, Carla Lynn Melendez, um, Casibel Pilveguilla, and, and many others who, uh, Taipeli, and many others who I'm, I'm probably uh, not naming at the moment, but I just want to let you all know that thank you for being a part of this uh, process, the storytelling process, and I feel all the curators on this team really are more like facilitators of your story, and I want to thank you for trusting us with that story. So here's what you can expect this morning. Uh, what we're going to do is have uh, the uh, four speakers on the stage talk for about 10 minutes, sort of telling their perspectives, how they experienced it, sharing some messages with us as well. We're then going to move on to an onstage conversation between us for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to open up the floor for the last 20 minutes uh, with the audience. And all of you are welcome to come down to uh, the microphone. Um, if you aren't able to uh, walk down the steps, just let us know, and we'll take the mic to you. And just remember, for the Q&A, we want to have as many folks speak as possible, so we want our comments to be short, crisp, to the point, Y sobre todo con mucho respeto, because that's something that we're definitely going to cultivate today is respect and maybe even a little love. So, I'm going to pass the mic now. Le paso la batuta a Jorge Esteves. Um, George. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about your story for the next uh, 10 minutes or so, how you experienced uh, the, the Taino movement, especially in the early years. Okay, well, I'm going to have to spin around. Excuse me, everyone. So I could look at this. Um, thank you all for coming to the museum. Um, it is a very exciting day for me. Um, I, I waited a long time to see just this, you know, actually 25 years. So this is a, an amazing moment for me. So thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. So, um, which is the one to turn? All right. So I'm going to give you a very brief... Um, uh, introduction as to how I came into the whole Taino, Taino thing. As like many of you here, I also at one time or another thought that I was the only Taino left or the only person that identified as Taino. I think a lot of people here can relate to that. Um, one, um, one summer, I had come back from a powwow and uh, there was an event at Central Park. And um, that day, uh, um, a friend of mine was Cherokee um, says hello to me, and, uh, and then I tell him, yeah, man, here I am, the, again, the last Taino. And he goes, no, 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 there's more. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, like, look, that guy right there is a Taino. And that guy was Robert Rosario, who also works here at the museum. And um, so I ran up to him, you know, and, and we started talking. So he told me about this series of meetings that had been taking place. There was like about three meetings in about people that were, like myself, getting together to... Um, for this, uh, acknowledging their Taino, the Taino roots. Um, I'm just gonna skip through this uh, real quickly over here. And this was a picture of, of, um, of that group um, that was taking place uh, at that time. So these meetings originally were in Manhattan, I believe, um, in a basement. I came into this at the fourth meeting. At that time, I met um, Miguel Sague, who's here. Um, I was surprised to know that he had already been starting this since the 70s, so he was actually also one of the very, very early people. Um, this group here formed this, uh, this group called the Asociación Indígena de Puerto Rico. Being from the Dominican Republic, I felt a little bit on the outside of that. So, um, but I, I stayed at the margins, but, uh, but very interested in what was going on. Um, very quickly, and from the very beginning, I noticed that there was um, a lot of disparity in what was going on, that some people 
were more on a spiritual bent, others were more on a political bent. You can see at that moment who was taking position, you know, like who the leaders are going to be, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the Taino nation was born out of this, um, out of this, uh, this moment. Um, but mind you, all of these things are taking place at one time, so I'm just giving you a really brief uh, introduction to all this. Um, the Asociación Indígena de Puerto Rico split up into two groups, from my perspective. One was Yuka, Maisiti Yucayeque Taino, which is a very spiritual group, and the other one was, of course, the Taino Nation. <clears throat> the Taino Nation was, uh, looking back in the years now, they were, uh, I always loved what they did because they were the first ones to really plant the flag and say, you know, we're Taino and, and, and begin this process. Um, but some of their ideas um, didn't fit too well with the way I, I saw things. Um, and, uh, and, but my city, Yucayeque, definitely um, had more of what I, what I was personally looking for, more spirituality and things of that nature. Within the my city, Yucayeque, Taino, I met um, some members that later on became Taino del Norte. And they were fantastic. Bobby Gonzalez was one of the originators of that group. And um, Bobby has been instrumental in, in my development because um, all his resources he shared with me from the very beginning. So I can tell you that half of all the vast information that I have gathered came from Bobby Gonzalez. Um, and then within that group uh, was the Arawak Mountain Singers. Um, so years ago, years before this happened, I had, um, I had this experience where I was going out west to powwows, and, um, and I was uh, embraced by a lot of native people out there, um, which is so different from here, because uh, out there people just took me as Indio, whereas out here it was always a challenge. It was always people, um, a lot of people would, um, you know, uh, either deny it or, or critique, uh, you know, um, my identity anyway. So, um, but somewhere along the line, I, I felt that I, I wanted to concentrate on more uh, Caribbean, Caribbean uh, identity. Um, but when I came into this Taino uh, revolution that was being formed, um, I, um, I, I, I saw the problems that were beginning to arise. So I, I, I gravitated to these as I was very familiar with North American Indian um, culture. And uh, so we went powwow to powwow. Basically what we did was we played powwow music, but using Taino, Taino words. And we were instrumental in getting a lot of people into the fold. You know, a lot of Boricuas and Dominicans would go to the powwows and they would be happy to see that there was actually Caribbean people drumming and playing, playing the part. But, uh, but it looked like we were pretending to be something that we weren't, you know. And at a certain point, I had this epiphany where I actually asked the guys from the drum, I said, uh, what are we doing on this drum again? Exactly, what, what was the purpose of this? You know, after a few years of going to power, from power to power, it, it became, it, it got very old for me quickly. Um, but I was proud of what he had accomplished, and I thought that we were the only Caribbean people that were actually in the powwow circuit. And then I ran into these guys, and these guys were the Brooklyn drums. They were actually the first ones to enter the powwow world as Taino. Well, actually, they didn't identify as Taino, they did identify as Indio. But um, they had started out of, um, this had begun in the 1960s from a group of Boy Scouts who had, uh, um, had gone to a powwow and they fell in love with the culture. Um, excuse me. So they, they, um, they gravitated toward uh, North American Indian drumming and also to grass dancing, which is a, a powwow style dance. Um, believe it or not, they were the ones who introduced the short fringes or the long fringes on the, on the grass dance outfit that North American Indians use today in, in powwows. And also, um, there are certain grass dance moves, like when in the grass dance, when they bend down and they do this, uh, that's actually a salsa move. <laughs> True story. The thing was, that the, the way they explained it to me was that then, then since they were just learning, they had to incorporate from what they knew, which was this. So whenever you go to powwows now, you'll always see that as the grass dancers bend down, they start shaking like this, and that's... <laughs> That's Boricua right there. <laughs> so as you can see, the appropriation was both ways. <laughs> so, but during that time, in the power time, you know, you would always hear this, like, who are these people? Where did these people come from? It's like out of the blue, all these Puerto Ricans are saying that they were Indians. And one thing that I heard, I actually heard this was, um, here comes those... Effing time, Puerto Ricans um, pretended to be Indians, but we kept on playing. 
We kept on playing because we believed in what we were doing. And then later on, we heard, here comes these freaking Tainos. But we were Tainos now. <laughs> this is progress. It was progress. So I thought I had the story straight. And um, I thought that I knew the origins of the whole movement from my perspective. You know, everybody has their own perspective, of course, how they came into it. I came into it at the fourth meeting, um, like I said, and I met a lot of individuals. So I, um, but then, um, and this is the, the part that's going to seem a little out there. I had a dream one day with, with a woman. Um, and it was this woman right here, who's sitting next to me right now. Um, and I had this dream with her before I actually ever met her, which was surprising. And then I learned that she was actually the first one in Boriken to begin this movement, you know, at least the, the, from my perspective, like I said. Um, and, uh, and I saw how, even to this day, all the groups that came after her went through her in one way or another. Um, like, for example, like, uh, this is a dance group from Puerto Rico. I don't know if they're still together. And then this group here, I was also, I was actually at the first meeting um, with uh, the, the UCTP. Um, the, the Taino Nation um, had this idea that they were not a group, but they were actually spoke for all the Taino people and um, or for all the other groups. And if you weren't part of the Taino Nation, you, could, you were not considered Taino. They called us, everyone else, they call us um, pre, uh, pretenders or uh, imposters. That's what the, the, the term. So um, Robert Barrero, he decided that enough was enough and that it was time for us to, to do our own thing. So he formed uh, this organization, which is still alive and kicking to this day. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, you know him? <laughs> okay. So, and then of course, a little later on, you get other groups that formed, for example, like Watumaku, which is a very big group, and um, I find them to be uh, um, very powerful because they're, they, they come really close to what was at one time. Um, so I actually, I admire, personally, I admire what all the groups have done. They're all a little different. They're different from what, like, from what I do in, in many respects. But for the most part, you know, we're different groups, but the reality is that we're all one group, you know? I mean, this is, it, we, we like to have these groups, as this click thing, but we're all actually one people. Um, and then this is the group that I formed. Um, and with that, I'm just going to um, pass the baton. Thank you very much. Gracias, Jorge.